Fisher hunter gatherers in the Middle Archaic period in Louisiana have built a large enclosure containing 11 earthen mounds connected by ridges. These fisher hunter gatherers were part of the Evans culture, who lived in the area from between 6000 BCE until 2000 BCE. The locations of these earthen mounds is in northeast Louisiana, and the site is called Watson Break. Long thought to have been a part of the later Poverty Point culture, it wasn't until the 1990s that the remarkable antiquity of Watson Break was recognized. Older than the pyramids of Egypt, and older than Stonehenge, this unique site is contemporary to Newgrange in Northern Ireland. My name's Kaylee, and today we're going to look into the Watson Break Mounds, which is unique because it's amongst the oldest and most complex mound sites in North America. Overlooking the swampy floodplain of the Watson Bayou on the edge of the Deweyville Terrace, about one mile west of the Washita River, are the Watson Break Mounds. As this was the ideal location with access to both upland and lowland resources, the Watson Break stream was a clearer and faster stream than the Washita River. Since the creation of the mounds, the Washita River has shifted approximately 500 meters eastwards, making the site further away from the stream. Around 6000 BCE, sea levels had risen high enough for the Mississippi River and other rivers to slow the flow down. The slower currents made the natural creation of meanders, loops and oxbow lakes possible. These features are the characteristics of the southern rivers today. An oxbow lake is a U-shaped lake that forms when a wide meander of a river is cut off, creating a freestanding body of water. Around this time, the people began to focus more on fishing, which provided the most nutrients and calories. The riverine and estuarine plants and animals filled most, if not all, of the needs of the people in the area. The abundance of these resources played a key role in the diets of the Louisianans from the Middle Archaic period up until present day. It may have even played a significant role in the construction of the earthen mounds in the area. The builders of these mounds were from the Evans culture, who lived in the area from 3400 BCE up until 2800 BCE. The Evans culture got its name from the discovery of a distinctive spear point called the Evans Point, dating from between 3400 BCE and 2800 BCE. Many projectile points produced during the Middle Archaic period have a distinctive stem that helped secure the point to the spear. The stem was created by making indentations in the base or the side of the point. The creators of the Evans point created an extra indentation on each side of the blade, making their spears distinctively different. The Evans culture was an egalitarian society, living on small residential camps around and on mound sites like Watson Break or Conley. The most famous mound site from the Evans culture is Watson Break, a complex habitat mound site containing 11 mounds in an oval arrangement connected by ridges and causeway earthworks surrounding an enclosure. The connecting ridges form two curved rows of earthworks called the North and the South Mounds, and the enclosure measures approximately 300 meters long by 200 meters wide. The first map of the earthworks were sketched by archaeologist Rika Jones, who identified the site in 1981, and Harvard student John Belmont. Together, they compiled a map of the site in 1984. Watson Break was long believed to be from the Poverty Point culture, most likely because many archaeologists around the time were resistant to the idea that mounds were being built during the Archaic period. The Archaic period lasted from 8000 BCE until 800 BCE. Poverty Point was seen as an outlier and the oldest earthwork in the United States, dating from between 1700 BCE and 800 BCE. But that all changed in the 1990s, when the remarkable antiquity of Watson Break was discovered. It was long thought that mound building societies needed to be supported by agriculture, because they theorized that a hunting gathering lifestyle could not provide enough food to support the mound builders. Another reason why archaeologists didn't believe Watson Break to be that old is because there were long-standing theories that large-scale earthworks could not be built until a hierarchical status system developed. They believed that without a chief or someone with power to compel the immense labor, the earthworks couldn't have been built. The evidence gathered at Watson Break and other middle and late archaic sites have toppled these beliefs. 
it's now agreed that natural resources were abundant enough in the area to support the egalitarian mount builders, and that societal hierarchies weren't necessary to get the work completed. During the Middle Archaic period, northeastern Louisiana was experiencing climatic variability. Research has uncovered that the summer temperatures were comparable to summer temperatures in the modern times, but that the winter temperatures were far warmer than the winters currently are. This made it possible for the ancient indigenous people to live there all year round. Radiocarbon dates have indicated occupation of Watson Brake around 4000 BCE, before the construction of the mounts took place, although this occupation was sporadic. The construction of the mount started somewhere around 3400 BCE and lasted for approximately 600 years until somewhere in 2800 BCE. Many mounts at the site show multiple stages of construction and extended periods of occupation on each stage. Mount A is the largest with a height of 7.6 meters. The base of the mount is approximately 70 meters in diameter. They've discovered seven stages of construction of Mount A. Mount E is the second largest mount with a height of almost 4 meters. The main difference between these two mounts is that Mount E was constructed in one continuous flow. There are nine more mounts, ranging between 50 centimeters in height up to 3.4 meters in height. The evidence of occupation around the site is widespread, although lacking the pottery we are used to finding near these earthworks. The inhabitants of the Evans culture heated gravel to cook with. Hot rocks were used in hearths to provide a long-lasting heat source, and they were used to stone boil liquids in containers like leather bags. The heated gravel tends to break down into smaller pieces. Pre-pottery sites like these can contain large amounts of this debris. At Watson Break, the density of firecrack rock is very high on the earthworks, but almost completely absent from the level interior of the enclosure, suggesting that the cooking was done on top of the mounds and ridges. Watson Break provided information on the daily and ceremonial life, and quite some information about the food they ate and the tools they used to capture and prepare these foods. Bone preservation was excellent in some of the areas, due to the presence of mussel shells at the base of Mount B. These mussel shells lowered the acidity in the soil, which helped better preserve the artifacts and bones. The diet of the Watson Break Mount Builders consisted of fish. This included catfish, freshwater drum, and sunfish, and this was approximately 80% of the meat they ate. But they ate deer as well, and small mammals such as rabbit, squirrel, beaver, otter, and raccoon. Turtles, mussels, duck, geese, water snakes, and snails were important parts of the diet as well. Acorn, hickory nuts, grape, and sugarberry were gathered as well. This basic diet continued in Louisiana until at least 1200 AD. Stone tools were found in large quantities at Watson Break. The majority of these tools were tiny drills, 154 in a finished and 93 in an unfinished state. The majority of these drills were found at Mount D, which appears to be some sort of a workshop floor. These drills were most likely used to drill holes into small stone beads. But, more curiously, only seven beads were found and only three of these beads were completed to the point that they had been drilled, but all of them were cracked. One might wonder where all the finished beads have gone. Bone tools were scarce, but included eight awls and a fish hook, one finished and five unfinished beads. They found one antler flake as well. This was used for the fine sharpening of the edges on stone tools. This was the only antler artifact. All the bone tools were found at Mount B, where the mussel shell deposits aided in the bone preservation. There is no evidence for human burials in the Evans culture mounds. This is consistent with the belief that they were an egalitarian society. However, they did find the humerus of a child who was approximately three years old next to Mount B. Individuals of this egalitarian society were buried at residential camps soon after death. No mortuary items have been found, giving more weight to the egalitarian way of life. The land on which Watson Break is located has been in the ownership of the Gentry family since the 1950s. The family refuses to sell the property to the state, which makes the site not accessible to the public. Although the family has granted permission to specific archaeologists to conduct research at the site. However, Watson Break is the most extensively researched Middle Archaic earthwork in North America. But, as you have noticed from this video, there is a lot of work that still needs to be done. 
not only at Watson Brake, but other earthworks in the area as well. What triggered the mound building tradition at Watson Brake and other sites along the Mississippi Valley remains unclear. Their first built stages are too small to have been motivated by aggrandizement of any nature. They aren't burial mounds like the contemporary mounds we see in Ireland. Some of the earthworks might have turned out to be useful for flood protection, but no researcher seriously proposes this to be the reason why they were built. Researchers all agree on one thing. These mounds had some kind of higher purpose. It's just unclear to us what that might have been. I found some scarce information about several earthworks during the research for this video, and I will definitely cover these earthworks in future videos. Although some of these earthworks are on privately owned land, like Watson Brake, and this brings in a whole new problem. Near Poverty Point, the Neal family demolished their share of the mound structure when they learned the state might want to buy it for what eventually became a National Historic Landmark in 1962. Lower Jackson Mound, which has been linked to the builders of Watson Brake, has been destroyed by George Skipper in the late 1980s. Many of the mounds in North America haven't been identified, properly researched or protected. We might never reveal the secrets they keep hidden. Unfortunately, it's their right of private ownership that makes it nearly impossible for archaeologists to learn more about the mound building cultures in North America. As one member of the Gentry family said in doubt of the scientific research dating Watson Brake, do you believe in the Bible or do you believe in some scientific carbon dating? I side with the Bible. The only thing the archaeologists can do is try to work alongside the families who own the land. As data collection is improving with every generation, they hope the families will keep providing them special access to conduct their research. Many people grow up in the United States unaware of their ancient history, a time filled with mystery and unanswered questions. Many of them look at Europe and wonder why their country doesn't have such earthworks or monuments. Now that we know they do, I hope to uncover more about them in the future. But with that said, you've reached the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click the bell icon for notifications every time I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or click the link in the description down below. I would also like to thank my patrons, Richard, Barry, Floyd and NGC6543. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!